The planet is full of unsolved mysteries and happenings. And I want to share with you my top 10 enigmatic mysteries. On the top of my list is the strange case of the Malaysian aircraft MH370. Even as I talk to you and you listen to me, the whole world is hunting for that aircraft and the passengers on board. What happened to MH370? Let me start my 10 episodes with this beautiful one on the greatest aviation mystery ever, the mystery of MH370. It was 12.42 a.m. on the 8th of March, 2014. Malaysian airline flight MH370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur towards Beijing. On board are 227 passengers, 10 attendants and 2 pilots. Senior pilot, 53-year-old Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah, was in command, assisted by 27-year-old First Officer Farik Hamid, who was on his last training flight before being commissioned permanently into the fleet. The captain was one of the senior most people of the airlines and a very, very respected pilot. Everything seemed so normal and very much under control. The first 20 minutes passed in routine procedures. The plane crossed the coastline of Malaysia and flew above the South China Sea towards Vietnam. Almost perfect. Everything was going as per the plan. It was just another daily routine flight, point to point. 1.19 a.m. The craft was reported 35,000 feet above sea level by the captain. A few minutes later, the flight entered the jurisdiction of the Vietnamese air traffic control and received a message. Malaysia 370 contact Ho Chi Minh at 120.9. This message was relayed by Vietnamese air traffic control. Captain Shah replies, These were his last words. In seconds, the greatest mystery of aviation history was born. MH370 just disappeared 30 seconds after reaching Vietnam Air Control. Malaysian Air Traffic Control did not notice this immediately, assuming that the plane was outside the vicinity of the radar. This was not unusual. On the other hand, Vietnam Air Traffic Control witnessed the aircraft actually entering their airspace but abruptly disappearing from their radar. They attempted to communicate with the plane but had no response whatsoever. For 18 minutes, they persisted to attempt to connect with it but to no avail. They informed Kuala Lumpur that MH370 had disappeared from their control. Normally, the Rescue Coordination Center, Kuala Lumpur, should have been immediately alerted to check the truth of this information. Strangely, it was delayed by four full hours by the Malaysian Air Traffic Authorities. 6.32 a.m. This was almost the exact time that MH370 should have landed at Beijing. But this did not happen. Immediately, an emergency search operation was called in and an estimated entire strip of South China Sea between Malaysia and Vietnam was searched by 34 ships and 28 aircrafts from seven different nations. An international search team came into operation. Nothing resulted. Four days later, it was reported that the plane had disappeared from the civilian radar. But a military radar had spotted the craft that night. Strangely, this spotting of the plane at 2.22 a.m. 
was not in the South China Sea as would have been expected, but west of Malaysia above the Straits of Malacca, heading towards India and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This was shocking news. This was in the opposite direction of the flight path. People wondered if the flight had lost direction and crashed into the Himalayas or had lost itself in Kazakhstan. After a few days, a new clue emerged via a satellite reading. MH370 had been automatically communicating with a satellite along its path. This is a common happening with flights like the Boeing and normally this helps in better cases and ease of control of flights. This is similar to the Wi-Fi automatically connecting with our devices as we enter those signal zones we have already been in before. Problem was that this plane was only logging into the satellite network but not messaging anything. No data was transferred between the craft and the satellite. It is clear, the satellite was contacted by somebody on board, but nothing more happened. Scientists used this data with the argument that the satellite would have turned its direction to accommodate communication with the plane. So the angle of the turn could probably reveal the location of the plane at that time. Such a connection between a satellite and the flying objects is known as a satellite handshake. Seven handshakes existed in this case. Seven circles of probabilities were drawn, but the proposed area was unmanageably big. A wide area of probability because satellites cannot give exact locations. So, investigators did more calculations using the speed of the craft and the fuel available on board. After correlations, they zeroed down to the hot spot of doubt. An arc, 2,000 kilometers west of Australia, called the Seventh Arc, was a large expanse of ocean which had never been explored much before this. Many areas were searched on priority as areas of suspected zones for the probable crash site. April 2014. All surface searches were called off and deep sea searches commenced. This was one of the most expensive and the longest searches in the history of aviation. For years, the search continued, but nothing resulted. Years later, an almost $160 million spent, the operation was dumped as a failure and shut down. Everyone had almost given up on this very, very strange case. Renewed hope came in July 2015, when a part of the debris was found in eastern Madagascar, off the islands of Reunion. A broken part of the flaperon of flight MH370 was washed ashore. The case was reopened to the world with new hope. In 2018, an American company called Ocean Infinity took it as a challenge to reopen the deep sea search at no cost to the Malaysian government. They would only bill them if they were successful. No find, no fee were their terms. They had advanced underground equipment and were able to scan the entire flow of the ocean that was suspected. However, this also was a failure. The Malaysian police started a new line of investigation and checked out the passengers and their records for any sabotage. Background checks of all onboards, including pilots, were conducted. A sabotage or intentional crash by the pilots or terrorists was not ruled out. Captain Mohammed Shah became a prime suspect and a probable suicide attempt from his side was also discussed. He was suspected to have crashed this flight. There were some reasons for this. The plane could not have turned on autopilot on its own. A clear 180 degrees turn from Vietnam towards Malaysia has occurred and this could not be if the pilot had not done it intentionally. 
Secondly, the craft was strategically flown on top of the Thailand-Malaysian border. This made them disappear to both the controls of the air traffic on both sides and they were incognito and almost in a no signal zone. Coincidentally, Shah had drawn an imagery path for a flight simulation game he played in his house, which was exactly the same route as the final path of MH370. A really really big coincidence. But this was ruled out because he was very experienced. He had no mental problems and showed no signs of strange behavior which normally a person would if he had suicidal tendencies now came a new theory of hijackers maybe hijackers were on board coincidentally they found two iranian passengers traveling on fake passports it was however proved that they were stealing their way to settle in europe and were not hijackers they had planned to go from beijing to europe and so the hijack concept was thwarted and there was no strong evidence for this theory a new and probable theory was discussed the passengers and crew must have fainted because of oxygen deficiency and the autopilot had taken over the plane would have traveled till the fuel got finished and thereafter crashed there might have been a fire accident on board all systems must have been shut off maybe as they enter the vietnam traffic zone some malfunction might have occurred and the pilot tried to retrace the path back to malaysia maybe the oxygen depleted suddenly and everybody got knocked out a theory of aliens taking over the aircraft also flew around or a shoot down by another country many other theories were also suspected maybe this was another bermuda triangle an area of great suspense none of these theories had any proof and remained in international discussions as a loud part of the agenda truly the world was buzzing with the news of the strange mystery of mh370 where are we now in this case what is the update as you and i talk in 2022 some proof came up that looks strongly probable retired aerospace engineer richard godfrey has come up with a very probable theory he used amateur radio wave technology which is difficult to comprehend for the common man his theory of wspr the weak signal propagation reporter is a complex technology using radio waves reflections atmospheric reflections are studied via the computer aeroplane flight paths are also calculated this way he predicts that mh370 is in the 7th arc area only maybe 4 kilometers beneath the water stuck in some volcanic areas but this area had been scanned earlier when the australian research team had got into action godfrey had pinpointed the exact location with an accuracy of 40 nautical miles he has requested a 40 nautical mile zone to be searched immediately drift analysis theories support this assumption using ocean currents about 27 bits of the aircraft debris has been washed ashore around islands in this area we have now actually zeroed down on a zone are we very close to solving this mystery Is it a matter of few days, few months, a few years? Godfrey says, if we start looking now, in the next one year, we could touch that spot. For me, I strongly feel by the end of 2023, this mystery will be solved. What do you say? We may now be close to solving one of the greatest aviation mysteries that the world has ever known. So many years have passed. and even today people wake up wondering what happened to those passengers to the crew to the pilots and to the most talked about flight mh370 if you like the content of this video do like and subscribe to my channel meet meenamma
Don't forget to click the bell icon for regular updates. Also do comment and interact with Minamma. I would love your opinions. Minamma looks forward to meeting you again in the next video and episode. Let us together take a long journey into yet another mystery that intrigues me. Till then ladies and gentlemen, have a great life and make a difference. Minamma.